Hello everyone, my name is Viktor Öhman, lead artist at Quixel. In this video, I'll be showing you how I created this clean, realistic bathroom, and then converted it into this spine-chilling Silent Hill homage by leveraging multiple decals and atlases from the Megascans library, and by using Unreal Engine's ray tracing technology to have photorealistic reflections and lighting. So let's jump right in and get started. Before we jump into Unreal, I just wanted to show you the concept or reference I used. I wanted to keep the general layout, but put a fresh coat of paint on it. The scene itself is very simple and so is the base geometry, and I'm mainly relying on the materials and lighting here. If we switch over to this grey box version that I prepared, you can see just how simple it really is. It's mainly just a couple of extruded boxes, and the realism comes from the subtle real-world information from the scans, and from the ray tracing, lighting and reflections in UE4 which really play well together. So let's go ahead and apply some materials. I downloaded the materials using Quixel Bridge and exported them using UE4 Live Link, which lets you get them into your project with just one click. And the five materials you saw me selecting there are the main materials for the entire scene. So once I've exported them, they're available in my project, and I'll go ahead and duplicate it by hitting Ctrl W, just so I have a copy of the original. You can also right click and do it that way. Next, I'll open it up and tweak the albedo color a bit so that it has more of that 80s public bathroom feel. Next, I'll drag and drop it onto the wall, and look at that, that's a wonderful coconut parchment hue right there. No, but in all seriousness, if we zoom in on it, it looks pretty darn spectacular. And it'll look even more awesome once we turn on the ray tracing later. I'll go ahead and get another material from the library. And this time I'll get one for the floor. And I'll do the same thing here and make a copy of the original. And I want this to have more of a plasticky or vinyl look that schools and other public places use. So I'll select a color that no one would ever choose for their floor. And then I'll adjust the roughness to make it more reflective. And there we go. For the rest of the materials, I'll just go ahead and drag and drop them as they're already imported. But I use the exact same steps for these as I demonstrated earlier. And these metallic surfaces will really shine, literally, once I switch on the ray tracing reflections. So now we got all the materials for the environment applied, and it's time to populate it with some assets. All of these are also utilized in Megascans materials, including the plastic bag for this uh, trash bin, which is using a garbage bag atlas. I also added a couple of signs for some additional splashes of color. So let's take a closer look at the lighting. For this clean version of the environment, I'm only using two rectangular lights for the whole thing. One is in this main area, and the other one is around the corner next to the door here. And this actually works really well, and as you can see, they both influence and affect the room really nicely, individually. But if I go ahead and enable the ray tracing features here in the console, you'll see just how much more realistic the lighting starts to look when it bounces around, catches colors, and reflects realistically in the reflective surfaces. If you check out the mirror here, it's really night and day when you compare it on and off. The same thing goes for the floor. It's just so satisfying to see just how much more defined the reflections of the urinals look in the floor when you enable ray tracing. Now if I toggle the lights on and off with ray tracing enabled, you can really see how nicely it fills the room and just bounces around. You can also adjust the ray tracing options in the camera or in a post-process volume if you don't want to work with the console. Here you can see the difference it makes if you adjust the max roughness value. It reduces the number of surfaces that are affected by ray tracing, but it also increases performance, so finding a nice middle ground is important. To really help tie everything together, I used decals. And the way I used them in this clean version is really subtle compared to the horror version, and I'm mainly using them to create subtle differences in the wall material, dust and grime in the corners, etc. But if you combine it all, it really adds a ton of realism. And to complement the Megascans decals, I also used a very simple linear gradient that I place here and there. It's a little bit like light painting, but I control the intensity and hue of the different parts of the room. 
My goal with this version was to have it be clean but with obvious signs of daily use, wear and tear. So I also added some decals such as torn posters, repair patches on the walls and so on. These are the kind of things that are so hard to do by hand but it's readily available in the real world. So we take another look at the horror version here, you'll see that I've really used the decals in another way and they are what helped me transform it quickly and easily. I'll take you through the steps I took to get here by deconstructing each part of the process. And first off I thought I'd show you the approach I took with the materials. For most of the materials I simply adjusted the tint, color intensity and reflectance values, such as the ones I'm editing here. I created duplicates and edited their values instead. And in my experience it's a lot easier if you apply the materials to the surface before adjusting their values. For these materials I'm using the default material created by the Bridge Live Link, which comes with tons of tweakable parameters out of the box. My main goal with editing these materials is to reduce the saturation and to drive up the contrast in them. And as you can see, these tiles here are a little bit more different than just some parameter tweaks. To create this tile material I went into Mixer and added a jittered pattern to it which made the different tiles have height variations and in some cases even removed the tiles completely, exposing the underlying material. Mixer can be used to create some absolutely crazy materials from scratch but using it to create material variations like this is really one of its greatest strengths as you don't have to reinvent the wheel and recreate yet another ceramic tiles material. Next up I just went ahead and adjusted some of the other materials as well in the scene, the same way as before. I also went the extra mile and added a plane for the urinals, on to which I added a basic urine material. And this is my favorite part of most projects like this, adding decals. Decals are incredibly versatile and powerful textures that you can apply to any surface in your level without worrying about the underlying objects UVs and so on. And if you saw my Dust 2 scene, which I'll link in the description, you'll know by now that I'm a sucker for decals and I really wanted to use them to their fullest in this project. I'll start off by adding some cracks where the paint meets the tiles and I'll place them all the way around. You can duplicate quickly by holding the Alt key on your keyboard while moving it. Next up I'll add a broken concrete decal, which actually really works well as a broken tiles detail. I'll duplicate it and place it next to the door as well. I'll just rotate it a little bit so that it doesn't look repetitive. I'll also add a large crack here to the right above the mirror. And I found this decal while working on DE Dust 2, which I found incredibly useful to break up walls in a realistic way. It's actually a fiberglass sheet, but it works so nicely if you just set it to be just a little bit off color compared to the wall. Next up I'm actually using an ink blotch material, but I'm using it to create what looks like a mold on the walls. The cloudy appearance really does sell that illusion. In order to make the fiberglass decal that I just placed be above the mold, all I have to do is set the priority order higher on it. Generally speaking, at least for me, I very much prefer to work with layers, adding several more subtle and discrete decals to build up the desired effect rather than being more heavy handed. Alright, time to make the floor disgusting. The Megascans library has a whole bunch of different blood spatter decals, which is perfect for stuff like this. I'm adding a couple of different types of blood decals. Some are more dried up and others are more fresh, like these ones at the door for example. Look at that, that's absolutely disgusting and I love it. Another thing I did for the floor was that I added some atlases, such as charcoal, pebbles, broken tiles and stuff like that. And this really helped break it up and look even more worn down, especially coupled with these 3D meshes that I'm placing along the walls here. I'm also utilizing some 3D trash assets beneath the trash can here. Here's a charcoal atlas I mentioned before. I brightened it just a little bit to blend it more with the floor and to make it look more like concrete chips and dust. Some of the most useful decals in pretty much any scenario in my opinion are leakage decals. This can be added pretty much anywhere to add some nice weathering and directionality to your composition. 
Just like I did with a clean version of this scene, I use simple gradients here as well. Although in this version they are a lot more noticeable and really add to the grimy, disgusting appearance. A bit like the nasty build that we see in public swimming pools. These graffiti tags are the only custom decals used in this scene other than the gradient, as the text on them is rather specific. They are using the same decal master material that the live link created for me though. To really tell the story of the fresh blood on the floor by the door, I added some bloody handprints to the bottom half of the door, as if someone tried to crawl out. Fun fact, these are actually the handprints of my colleague Billy. And don't worry, he's still alive and kicking and creating awesome scans for you guys. Now that the environment is looking its part, it's time to set the mood with the lighting as well. For this version I went for a much more directional and high contrast look, and I disabled RTX global illumination and worked more with spotlight for the focal points and kept the original rectangular lights more as ambient lights. I did keep ray tracing reflections on though, and these two ray tracing features can be enabled and disabled individually, depending on what your project needs. I also made sure to add some complementary colors, such as a more bluish or greenish tint on the light around the corner there. At this point it's really just a matter of fine tuning the lights, the ambience, adjusting the post process settings and grading it. And that just about covers the steps I took to convert this from a nice everyday public bathroom into a terrifying and disgusting hellhole you wouldn't want to touch even with a stick. It was a ton of fun working on this project, especially seeing as I love the Silent Hill games and their aesthetics. And it was really fun to challenge myself to try and bring them into this day and age. Make sure you tune in for the extended breakdown livestream, which is appropriately scheduled for Friday the 13th of this month. I really hope you learned something from this video, and as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.